Alright, there you go guys, uh, just another just another live build, I've got a bit of time on my hands, uh, it's, yeah, it's coming in the weekend, so I've just finished um, shooting a review on the Tetra Glue in high definition, so we'll, hopefully we'll see that up in, um, dare say, tomorrow, uh, probably tomorrow afternoon it should be up. So tomorrow afternoon, my time, it would be, it'll be tomorrow uh, morning UK time. Okay, so keep your eyes out for that. It's going to be a basically a clear, a clearer version of the Google Plus Live uh, product testing I'd done the other day. Um, yeah, it's just basically just that. Have a quick squeeze at the um, the products that I had, and so I thought, well, you know, I've got a bit of time now. I've done everything I had to do, so I may as well just start plodding away, and get back into my model building, which I haven't done that for about a week. So, so just bear with me. So I hope you guys have a good weekend out there. Um, so I'll probably end up putting a. Link on the Facebook, um, modeling chat that I'm with, and you may see some other faces that you recognise. Um, this is, I think, this video is probably not, not really a tutorial on how to build the, um, the tornado, but I guess it's just seeing me. Um, Playing around with it because I've got most of it put together. So, <sighs> hey, good day. Um, now yeah, you're more than welcome to join if you want, guys. Um, you know, if you're sitting at your bench, whether you're building yourself, yeah, just click on the link, link, guys, and yeah, just jump in. Um, yeah, it's not gonna. Yeah, like if you always want to join a hangout or even just to meet people, yeah, go for it, guys. I'm not gonna bite you off. Um, that way, you know, if you got any questions as well, I can answer you directly. As long as you got a um, webcam and an active microphone on there, you can just jump straight in. So yeah, so I've been building this probably for. Oh, maybe. Was it? Oh, I'm sorry, so my webcam is not working my first time here. Yeah, that's all cool, mate. Now yeah, I remember that my first time watching a girl hang. I think it was, if you know who Dutch Molling is, Sebastian. I was actually watching one of his hangouts, and I had a dirty laptop with a real crappy camera on it. And I, for the life of me, I could not work out how to join, and eventually just playing around. On my own, I yeah, actually worked it out. So, yeah, webcams are pretty cheap on eBay too. But you know, if you want to spend the money, I do recommend spending a bit of money and getting a decent camera as well, because you can use it for a still camera as well as as well as shooting videos off to the side. But but um. um it's it work on Twitter, but it's not working in here. Stag. Oh, it's beyond, eh? No, oh, well, well, hope. Yeah, just hope you're enjoying it. Um, but there is obviously the, the the. I've got the questions box up, guys. So if you do want to know anything, um, anything you see on the bench, or anything that's yeah, slightly in shot. Or if you have, if you do follow my channel and you have seen any products that I um, that I use and you're you're not familiar with, feel free to ask a question because yeah, I can just quickly answer it. Um, if you want to do like a, if you want to see a little review or a product test or a um, tutorial, I can just quickly rip that out as well. But I've just got a bit of spare time here, a couple of hours. Not about it. Oh, was it now nine o'clock at night, Sunday, Sunday evening? Um, so I probably got about a couple of hours spare to do, do any building. So yeah, I can give you a cool video. Cannot see you. Oh, okay. Um, 
you can't see me, but I random thing. I'll let you check it out. That's good to know that you can't see me. Um, damn YouTube channel yet. Um, YouTube. Uh, where's it? YouTube. See. Well. Let's see. Very well. Oh, okay. Um, I know my laptop. I couldn't see because the processor installed very slow. I didn't have a very good video card in it, so now basically that just sits in my bedroom, hooked up to a projector as a multimedia PC. Um, but yeah, it's just I know sometimes in the Google Plus Hangouts that I have, some of the boys actually say they can see me quite well, so uh, it just might be it just might be on um, what what you're on. But that's a damn shame you can't see me, so I'm gonna try and just I'm just going to click on my own YouTube channel and I'm going to try and kill the sound before it jumps on so it doesn't start echoing. But yeah, it's working. Well, it is working on my YouTube channel. Um, it's, it says it goes up to 720, but I don't think it's 720. It's more 480 or something like that. Yeah, sorry about my arm, guys. <laughs> uh, like, I just kind of want to... Yeah, it's not about seeing my arm. It's it's about seeing what I'm doing. And now I'm kind of stuck because I haven't built this thing for about a week. So I'm trying to catch up where I'm up to. And I've had, I've had this. Actually, if you're curious, I've had this kit. Where's the box for it? This is a very, very old kit, guys. I bought this. Jeez, um, I bought this when I was in my early 20s, so I'm almost 40 now. So I've had this in my stash a very, very long time. And I've just decided to pull it out a couple of weeks ago. Because it's, yeah, it's just one of those plans of obviously, you buy a kit, you want to build it, but you, know, you just had a massive break from modeling, probably for about five or six years. But I've been back into it now for maybe last, or maybe five, six. So I thought, you know, just finished the SG34, um, that was a hoop to build, and prior to that I'd done the Panther, I think the Panther D, I think by Ravel, 1 to 35, and I had a blast doing that. Um, so, hey, hey, good evening, Chris. Um, got this kid, you see, but it's not too bad, mate. Yeah, well, I'm having, it's so far, um, so far, it's not too bad. The only issues I have, okay, so, and I'm going to point this out now, is obviously on a swept, swept wing aircraft, um, no, we're, when I'd say swept wing aircraft, it's anything like the F 111, um, the F 14 Tomcat, and obviously the, the Tornado here, you're going to have the wings, you know, go backwards and forwards. But the only thing I didn't like, um, I don't. I don't think I've done a live build on this. I've done it during the one of the Google Plus Hangouts with I think it was either Paul Bretland or Sebastian Scoo from Dutch Modeling. And inside, and already, I'll just to prove a point. Already, I've broken one of these off. Um, what they, <laughs> what it is, it's a tiny little plastic pin, probably about. Uh, it wouldn't even be. I'm getting the ruler out. One. It probably about a mil thick, and all of this is just one pin. And what they want you to do, or that what they wanted you to do, was insert the pin through the hole here in the wing. You can probably just make it out. I'm not giving the finger to us to bad have one. <laughs> so, sorry, I do apologise. Um, um, any idea? Um, is this? Okay. Don't kill me if I pronounce your name wrong. Is it Ab Abimail Jr.? Uh, any idea how to make it work? 
Um, make it here to work, please, and I'll shut up now. <laughs> um, it, de it depends. It depends on what you're actually using. Are you on a laptop? Are you on a, an iPad or a phone? Or are you on a desktop? Over mail. Um, it's working on Twitter. So mode cam is not working. My first time on here. Um, yeah, so it could be a number of things. Whether you've just plugged your webcam in while your computer's on, um, it's or yeah, you just got to let me know how you've actually got got it all set up because I. I know some of the guys on um, that use iPads. They sometimes have trouble um, seeing it, even on the G Plus Hangouts that we have with the boys. So yeah, just let me know, and I can try and answer it for you. Uh, where's my mouse? Uh, where's, uh, where's technology? It's not too bad. Okay. So while Adam is trying to reply back, um, I'll keep going with this. Um, so yeah, so what they will, what they in instructions. I don't think you'll see it because the webcam doesn't pick it up. If I was actually videoing a actual with my JVC webcam that sits that sits above my webcam on the tripod here, you'd be actually see it on the instructions I'd show you. But okay, what I'll do I'll make it easy for you because just in case it is a bit blurry. Um, all right, so if I get my Sharpie pen here, and right there where I put that black dot, so I bring it back out. I'll get rid of this box. So I see a box in the shot. Um, yeah, so if you can see where that black dot is, there's a there's a pin that actually comes out, and they want you to insert it in the in the bottom of the wing here, and then watch it. And this is during while the wings in two pieces, like, like this is before you glue the two halves together, and then you get a screwdriver or, or a hot flat surface, which I just melted over a little tea light candle, and <clears throat> so you push it in, heat your um, your surface up. I always use the flat end of my airbrush needle, so if you look at the airbrush needle, it's you know, it's just it's pretty flat on the back. So if you walk an airbrush, you know what the back of the needle looks like. So I just heated that up, pressed it in flat, so it expands the the back part of the pin and it spreads out and it stops it from coming out. Okay, theoretically, but because it is only one um, one pin and you're not meant to glue it in there, one little bump and it snaps off, which, which is what happens. So what I'm going to do is I'm due to space in my display cabinet, I'm going to have it um, the model displayed with the wing swept back. So I'm going to leave these the way they are at the moment. Okay, I'm in. I'm presenting, and I'm just trying, um, trying this video stuff to make other videos. But I believe that I need a professional camera. Um, if you, if you're trying to make videos for YouTube, um, am I saying, am I saying it right? Is it Abba Abba Mail? Like, just correct me if I'm wrong, because I really just don't know. Don't insult you by saying your name incorrectly, mate. Um, you don't need really expensive equipment to make YouTube videos. Um, there's a friend of mine, Benny, Benny Mac Attack. He uses an iPhone, and you can see how clear his videos are. Um, it's the only reason my videos of this video, whenever I do the Google Plus Hangouts, it's because it's streamed live on YouTube, which is your video quality is not going to be there. Also, I'm using a webcam. Um, it's I think it's only about a hundred and sixty dollar webcam, so it's it's not the best on the market, but it it gets me by just to do these live videos. Um, my other video, if I pop it off a tripod, so just if the screen jumps around a bit, because I'm just because both cameras are on the same tripod. That's all I'm using for my for my YouTube videos. It's just the JVC um, webcam. I know webcam uh, camcorder. So I mean, you don't need expensive gear, mate. It's you know, buy what you can afford. Don't send yourself broke doing it. 
Um, also, because I don't have ads on my commercials, of oh, <coughs> ads on my commercials, I don't have ads on my channel. Um, hang on a sec. Actually, this camera doesn't pop up. Yeah, so because I don't have ads on the channel, I'm not in it for the money. You know, I do it for you know, because I love bringing out videos for you guys, and especially all the modeling community out there. So yeah, it's mate, just spend what you can afford, and if you're happy with the with the quality of the video that comes out, um, that's just the that's the main main thing, I guess. So getting back to uh, the tornado, yes, yeah, so I'm going to display it in. In a closed wing position, but then I'm going to leave all these on just for the time being, as that's fairly tight. That's you know kind of loose-ish, and that one's fairly loose-ish. So what I'm going to do is once um, I think that's the top, I believe that's the bottom. So once uh, which way is the back? I mean, that's the back, the jet, that's the front. So they're going to sit something like, you know, they're going to sit. Something like um, if I just stop for a sec, guys. I'm just going through the comments because there's a few popping up. Um, oops. Okay. Okay. Just keep getting distracted. We've got Facebook in the background as well. <coughs> Excuse me. Now I'm just guessing this at the moment, fellas. So if you don't know what you're doing, always go back to instructions. <laughs> uh, blah, 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 blah. So top. Yeah. So you can see there. I don't know if you can pick that up. Now I'll try and hold this as still as I can, but if hang on, get me a paintbrush. That's weird. yeah, the airbrush you probably won't even see it. So if you can see there, there's like little symbols with this with a flathead screwdriver, and that's where they're saying melt the pins in and vice versa. So they give you some extra plastic pins and all that sort of stuff. Now what I'm what I'm not a fan of, uh, this is, and this is only just me personally, guys. I'm not saying you guys have to do the same thing because it's all Obviously, it's your model. It's your choice on how you display it. But what I'm going to do is, I'm actually going to glue these wings in place as well. So once all the pins are in, and I've got this sort of set the way I want it, I want it to, or the way I want it, I'm actually going to glue it all in place because what I don't want is, especially someone that comes over that picks up a model and goes, "Oh, look, the wings move back and forward." And all the paint just gets taken off and gets scratched up. So yeah, so I'm gonna glue the wings in place and then because and then that way I can set the pylons um, accordingly, straight like straight front and back. So so during in flight, because um, I think in I think it's in Lego, um, I talked to on the Google Plus hangouts as well. Because I'm not too sure. Like I'm, I'm not a big aircraft guy. Just so you guys know, I'm, I've got plenty of books on it, but you know, I don't know all the technical specs. Like half, the, half of you guys out there. So yeah, he, he explained to me that you know when the obviously when the wings go forward, the pylon shifts. So when it fires a missile, whoops. So when it fires a missile, you know these the missile is going to fire straight. So which is that's why I'm not really too phased. I'm just going to glue it in there. I'm at least going to get it lined up again. And then glue it back in there. So, so that's the plan, guys. That is the plan. Oh, Facebook, stop it. I'll tell you what, um, that international scale model of Facebook chat is one busy page. I mean, I can go away for three hours and come back. And there's like 400 messages on it. This is ridiculous. But, okay. So what are we actually up to? 
So we've done that. Close that. Is it? So put those all in. What is that for? That goes in there. So that doesn't make sense. Um, drill holes. Mm, weird. Very weird. Because that doesn't make sense. What I'm also going to do, which I haven't done a review on yet, I've only done this one in my um, Brisbane Model Hobby Expo uh, video that I put up the other, I think the other day, I think. But what I did pick up, if you watch the end of the video, I did pick up some new sanding sticks. Um, not to replace any of the other ones I use, so not. Um, I've still got the UMP sanding sticks over here, and I've got you know, just some random ones that I've picked up from cosmetic stores and dollar stores because they're all cheap. But these ones here I actually picked up for six bucks for two, so it's three dollars a packet. And I actually want to try these out. Um, so I've still, got a, I've still got another brand new one over there in the packet. So this here is going to be basically another trial run on this. See how they work. See how they last, whether they fall apart while you're using it. Um, but you know, really, realistically, this only cost me three dollars because you get two on a pack and six dollars. So, um, so if it falls apart on me and, and it's three dollars down the drain, but God, I spend more money on that than on alcohol. So, <laughs> so I don't think I'm going to miss that. Uh, I think it's down. Hang on, that's my shoe. My eye. Um, yeah, so one day we've still got one viewer. Yeah, so, so if you're expecting to see, um, it's going to be a while, I think, till I get back to the painting stage because there's. I'm actually going to take my time. Well, the SU34 actually went together really, really. I well, actually went went together quite quickly, being a one to seventy two scale kit, but it's still very big. I mean, it was. You know, if you watched it, I did mention it, it's bigger than a F1 to 48 F16, but you know, being one to seventy two. Didn't really have that many parts. Uh, the majority of the parts was uh, probably the landing gear and all the all the missiles and that. But as for the fuselage um, and the the rudders and all the wings and that, it um, went together quite quickly. Oh, jeez. Nope. Uh, we got steady green light. James, what are we doing for? How is that? P fifteen B. So we have to go yet. Yeah, where the seats? Jane takes some towel. What is it? I 
That's awesome. Who is six? Um, you're gonna love that. All these are six. No, no. No. Oh, yeah. I'm looking for the six, though, you know. It's like on the cardboard here, on the ruler. So, I can't really do much of the rest of the plane until. I get all this finished. And once again, got some reference material, just a one of those part works air combat collection. And too lazy to bring out a big book because it's too heavy. And if I can find it, I'll show you there, but that's probably the colour scheme I'm going for, which one is it? Um, just going to make sure that the deck of the slope. 45, 27, 45, 25. This is... This is British, British, Italian, German. So what have we got here? It's a black grey, olive green, and flat black. So at this stage, if you can see it, um, it's going to look like something like, I'll turn this light on behind the camera. Hang on. It's either going to be really bright or really dark. It's going to be that one there. So you're going to have the greens, the greys, or the, the greens there, dark grey and black nose. So hopefully it all turns out and I don't make a mess of it. And then what I did pick up as well for this build, there's going to be a bit of rambling because it's the start of the build. Well, it's kind of the start-ish. Um, so, when, so when I do make the later parts of this video, uh, you can always go back and check the first one out. And what I picked up is to do the actual plane itself because I don't want because on the SU-34, if you watch that obviously, I was using the Ultimate Weathering Wash um, Dark Dirt. Now that is a really, really nice wash, but um, I didn't want the brown. Like it's uh, like I love using like thank you for all this is an excellent product. I love using it, but I didn't want the brown. Um, so I put the brown Yeshi 34 and it, it it didn't look right like it's I think the the brown didn't really go too well with the blue so what I did pick up the Hobby Expo was I picked up it's just another clay based wash but it's made by oops, but it's made by Florio models and it's it's just a black one so hopefully it's going to be very close um, so I'll use that as well see how that goes now either that's going to be a good product and I like using it, or it's going to be a product and I don't like using it, so I can't make that call until I start using it. And what is with this Facebook page? Uh, Alright, so I'm just going to start painting this, I think. It's going to be a pretty boring video if you're just sitting there watching it, but unless you're probably sitting at home, well, I don't know, you can probably build models while you're driving your car, I don't know, but you know, unless you're sitting at, sitting at your bench, um, building as well, it's going to be a pretty boring video because, during, as you guys know, during the very first stages of uh, building, there's really not much happening. Just a lot of sorting parts out and planning what you're going to do. And the Atari instructions for the seats, what are they saying? F is what? Random tan. Or radium, sorry. <laughs> radium tan, sorry. Random tan. Radium tan. What the hell is that? 
more of my stuff. So B, B is black in it, black, black, plus grey. So, black, black, C, white. So C, D, A, E, that's E, flat yellow. Really? Yellow C belts? They're not really yellow stuff in this picture. They're more. It's not really yellow, it's more like a. I don't even see it there. It's. It gets glare out. And like, flat yellow to me is like a banana. It's more of a. Uh, a yellowy brown. So I'm going to have to. If I can get away with it, I'm going to try to use no, that's too dark. So it's gonna be oh what am I gonna mix with that? The, hang on, should I go through my paint and have a look? So the, uh, Oh jeez. I might have it in my range. Oh. Oh, fire, yeah. It's probably more like it, I think. So that's it. Dark yellow. Um don't answer the number of this color because what I've done is I've gone through the the color charts, the humble color chart itself, and I've just marked whether it's a matte color or a gloss color or a semi-gloss color, and I've just separated all my paint so all my glosses sit in another box, and so that box I don't think you can see it. No, it's just up here on, on the shelf here. Um, it's just all my matte humbles, and I just write the color on it so. I don't know the actual colour by number, so I do apologise. I think you can probably just see here, it's 2, I don't know, 24 or something, looks like it. Instead of that sticker there, I just put, just put a big bulk of paint on there. So, that colour sorted out. The last thing I want is a really bright yellow seatbelt. And F is, F, F, F. Red and tan, I love not red and tan is. Well, we can use some artistic license and make some. Oh, don't think it's going to be a real piggy. And I need some water because I'm running out. Hang on. Back in a second, guys. So, top this water up. Back in a second. It's been a while since I've actually been on the bench. So I've been actually last three weekends. Well, this is the first time I've actually been on the bench building. So, um, about three weeks because I've been actually quite busy on the weekends doing other things, other commitments. And see, it's really popped out. That's how good the fittings are on these things. It's not a part of his fault because it is a very old kit. And I'm going to do whether I need a primer or not. Um, 
Nope. It's already dark grey. This black, I probably would have primed it. No. Good old Angry Birds paint pot. Yes, yeah, so you, yeah, so if you are watching out there, yeah, you do have questions, eh? Do ask. Um, more than happy to answer your questions for you. I'm just going to grab some tissue paper down under here. And this stuff in this pot is actually quite thin. Like I've got a really bad habit of thinning out the paints when I bring them home. I'll always throw a bit more thinner in there. Um, so, just have a quick inspection of this, making sure that I don't. Oh, this is going to be hard. And if I try and zoom in anymore, it's going to be really, really blurry, guys. So, so I do apologize for that. And now I've actually thought about doing um, more live builds. Uh, not live builds, but doing more, uh, what do you call it, using my JVC camera. Now I haven't uploaded it yet. There still there still is another part to the SE thirty four, um, but it's about three hours, and I'm I'm actually going to upload that three hour video. It's oh, I I don't like me personally. I can't build. Um, What's this? Are those little balls on your video the little balls that are we supposed to like? The favourite moments or what? What's this? What little balls? Um, what's this? Are those little balls under your video the little balls that we're supposed to like? The favourite moments or what? I don't know. Don't understand that question. Have a mail if you're still on. Under my video, what little balls? Uh, you're talking about the green balls that are going up and down. Yeah. Abamal may have disappeared because he was saying that he was having trouble, I think, seeing me or seeing the video, but he could hear it once he fixed it. Because I've got a mouse behind me, so I can't actually reach over. It's... Yeah, so what I was getting at, yeah, sorry guys. Um, I started the first, I think, three or four parts using the, uh, what do you call it, the webcam that we're on now. And it was okay, like, you can kind of see what I'm doing. But the final. The final video to the SU-34, it was um, putting all the landing gear bay doors on. It was gluing all the small details with the landing gear itself. And there was a lot of small details which which the um, the webcam wouldn't have picked up. So I decided to use the, the camcorder to try and record it. And, yeah, it's it ended up being... Uh, I think about 23 gigs worth of worth of um, worth of footage, which I'll go try and get through. And I think I've only done I've edited about an hour of it. And so I've just gone buggered. I'm just going to use a webcam because that way I can um, record while I'm building. And as soon as I I kill I kill the live the live feed, it pretty much uploads it straight away within about five minutes and. Probably give it about an hour, and then it be 
you, know, you can sort of watch it in 720, but you know, it's it's not it's not the same. It's nowhere near as clear as using a camcorder. So I think just for me, time and ease, it's I just rather use the camcorder. And then if anyone has any questions after that, they can always leave a comment down down below in the comment box, and then I'll try and get back and answer it the best I can, or I can try and do a response video in in a small tutorial that way. And some people just have all the time in the world just to sit down and edit, but I don't obviously, so I do apologise for that. So all I'm doing, I you probably can't even see it. Um, yeah, you can see the, the yellow going down on the seat belts. It's only slightly raised surface. Like a, um, yeah, I haven't got any photo which seat belts or and I know a lot of guys out there will sand it back and they'll use blue tack to make the seat belts. And they'll use um, masking tape of also red. So there's lots of ways to do it. Um, what is it? So it's definitely the top. Okay, I'll just this thing here and then see if we can if I can find you on Facebook really. Yeah, so oh, two guys still watching. Um, so where are you guys from? Yeah, I don't want to be the only one talking. <laughs> it's just kind of good to know who's watching. So I'm just taking. Taking my time painting the seatbelt. So I do get paint in the middle part. It's only quite tricky to get rid of to clean it up. I'm going to use it a dark, and this worked, worked out quite well, this dark yellow. It's, um, by the time I put a wash on it, it's going to tone it down and make it even darker again. And that way we just go back and highlight it. So you just can then all I'm doing is I'm just using the side of the brush too, I'm not using the very tip, I'm not trying to use it down on a pencil. I'm just using the side of the brush, just light pressure just to get the, the top parts of the seat belt. Because I still want where the seat belts or down the side anyway. Um, I want that to be dark. I want that to represent shadow on the seat, so that's probably Get rid of all that the big pile of dye in here. So I'll just leave that there. You can probably see it. Well, hopefully, you can see it. Depending on what you're watching on. If you're watching on a mobile phone, it's going to be very hard to see unless you unless you've got a zoom option on the screen. So I'm just going to get some more paint. Yeah, so kind of getting off the subject of modelling, I've actually had a pretty good weekend, guys. Uh, what happened was, went to work on Friday, finished work. No, sorry, sad. Yeah, uh, sorry, Saturday. Had to work on Saturday, which is why I missed the Google Plus Hangouts. I think it was uh, what was it? Would have been Sebastian's. No, it would have been Paul's because Paul has it on Friday night. That's right. And so my best mate come up from Brisbane, or three of my good mates come up from Brisbane. 
um, you know, city boys and they've come out into the country um, had a big fire in my front yard got on the grog and woke up this morning feeling quite seedy I think they went home so once I left I had to catch up on some video editing um, so as soon as I've done that and yeah these guys aren't in the model building building either so they just uh, one of my mates they're all in construction I think yeah like myself but yeah they're not they're not model builders or anything so they're just um, come up to catch up so we had a really good time and they left probably that oh, mid, mid morning I think they left that mid morning so yeah so I basically spent most of the day shooting more videos um, with the camcorder and then I had to edit edit the thing and now it's just sitting there on my computer ready to be saved as a um, as a high definition video because I use Free Make Movie Maker to do all my videos all my all my edited videos anyway not my not these ones these are just fed live straight on YouTube uh, through Google Plus and so once I um, end this video tonight I want to start falling asleep because I'm going to go to work tomorrow guys um, it's going to be hang, hang up from here uh, convert that other video because she's all added all the, all the text and music and stuff is in it so it's just going to be converted to a uh, Windows MIDI pod, just a standard file on my computer so I can watch it at any time. And that normally takes, I think, this, this video is about 31 minutes, uh, not, in, not including the intro, so it's, yeah, it's about 32 minutes all up. And, um, and that's probably going to take about an hour and a bit to convert, uh, which is why I'm not doing it now because I'm trying to convert a video. Yeah, just choose up a lot of processing power on the computer, so that's just on hold. So as soon as I end this video, it's going to be convert that video, go to sleep, wake up in the morning, um, and that'll be all done. And all I can do is just upload onto YouTube. And that should be up in about three. Oh, how long does it normally take to a half hour video for me? Uh, probably about three. Two to three hours, I'd say. Um, oh, what was the other one? No, 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 no. Take more than that. Probably about five hours, five six hours, I reckon. So, so if you work it out, depending on where you're watching it from, um, all I can say is between Australia and the UK. So if you know, um, is is nine hours and if you're in Canada somewhere I've also got a friend who he lives in Prince Albert in Canada and I'm pretty sure he's 20 hours behind me um, so around I'm going to start work tomorrow that time for five we five Five, six, five. So around about 5.30 my time, 5.30 a.m. my time, I'm going to hit the upload button for the, on the channel, start uploading this video, um, The this Tetra review, now this is the new glue I've got, so you're going to see, see heaps and heaps of that. So if you want to see that, work it out, it's probably about five hours, I'm pretty sure. So by about 10 o'clock, 11 o'clock, or lunchtime, to be safe to say at lunchtime, um, the video is going to be up about 1 o'clock Australian time, my time. So, yeah, from what I said before, if you can work it out, just, uh, yeah, should be up. I'm doing this one here. Ah, oh, darn. Nearly got it.
Man, this list is getting longer and longer and longer. And I haven't actually put a link um, to this hangout anywhere because um, normally when I do, <laughs> my mates normally jump on and it kind of doesn't stay a live build. It kind of turns into a shit speaking marathon. I uh, just catch up having fun. So, and that's what happened last time on my, uh, my Simply Glues uh, product test video, live video. But if you do want to jump on and join in, I mean, feel free. Like, I'm not saying that nobody can join in and jump in. To um, okay. Uh, what is it? A B male, A B male. There you go. That's how you say it. <laughs> A different country as I get a real sponsor, but thanks. There's one thing I don't like about the Google uh, the questions and answers, and I actually put a time when the questions were asked. So I'm sort of looking down and looking up, and I don't know when the questions have been asked. So. I get it. I'm a bit late answering your questions because yeah, they just pop up anyway for some reason on my screen. Being thin paint, I'm gonna have to put another coat on this later. It's gonna be a very thin layer of it. Uh, yeah, if, I, if I do stop, it's just because I'm spinning, spinning around looking at my other monitor. Uh, I'm just seeing what the boys are saying on the chat. Because half the time it's like, it's me watching, it's me! <laughs> Alright, so that's just, that's just quick. Um, I have to do the middle one. Not too sure yet. Mm. Yep, I think I missed a bit. So before I get too excited and start showing you guys, just a little bit more to do here. Give this brush a wash yet. Okay. I should set one make like, sure that all the residue is off the brush. And what we end up with is there just a couple of seat belts there. But that's only the first case, so it's I'm gonna let this dry a little bit. You know, I can see there will just need a little touch up on there on the edges there. Like you're not going to pick it up through the webcam, but it's just going to be a little tidy up there. But I need to try and work out what this red red is. You can see on this picture of this. I 
Okay, I'm just going to guess where key. Um, try to think. Uh, the one we used is Atari's um, Flat Earth as a base color, and I guess I can highlight it from there. Come on, board this. thin too. I'm going to thin. I thin the absolute crap out of this stuff. It's really, really thick. Uh, it's the first. If it's the first time visiting this channel, or it's even the first time um, seeing a ball of Atari paint, because I know it's not available everywhere. Um, some of my friends have actually said they can't get it where they're from, or they've never seen it in their hobby shop. I'm not saying it's not in their country, but it's just not in their hobby shop. Um, and to be honest, it's pretty hard for me to get it as well. So I actually thin, thin it down a lot because it is very, very thick paint. Uh, best way to describe it would to say it's a brush paint, um, but it's but it's very, very airbrushable if you thin it down a lot. And it actually sprays quite nice. And, and I don't know why some people say it doesn't spray nice at all. Um, spread a lot of models with it. I've actually sprayed that Panther with it, and I was yeah, very happy with the result. Uh, you gain, I think it's a 20 mil bottle that the paint's like. Yeah, it's not all the way to the top. It's probably about three quarters or something up the top there. If you fill it up the rest of the way with uh, Vallejo's airbrush um, thinner. Not the airbrush cleaner, the thinner. Um, it becomes it becomes quite workable, more easy to use. But then you can thin it out more. So if you want to, for brush painting, you fill it up to the top. It's a really nice paint to brush with. But if you want to airbrush it, you're going to need to thin it out more. So, um, which is a bonus because if you can pick these up, I think. Well, I don't think they The store I bought them from, I didn't buy them online, I bought them from a retail store, and they were about 20 things. I think like $25, $25 from, from Toy World, which is a toy shop here in Australia, and generally, you know, in a major hobby shop, you paid about two dollars more just because toy world has, you know, they they buy so much. It's an Australian wide toy shop, so they've got heaps of buying power, so they can afford to drop the prices a bit. Um, I know that these in Hobby Rama, they're not twenty five dollars each. Okay, sorry guys, you probably think, whoa, twenty five dollars for for a bottle of paint, what a rip off. Um, no, it's twenty five dollars for. <coughs> A box like that, so you get um, this is the World War Two RAF aircraft set. And they're, yeah, twenty four ninety nine for a box. You get six six bottles of twenty mils each, so that's that's actually quite cheap. And so you go to the hobby shop, you're paying about twenty seven, I think it was twenty seven ninety five. But yeah, I didn't. I should have. There's one set that I do want that I can't get, but I'm gonna have to buy it anyway because the toy shop that I did get it from. In my hometown here, or the closest town I live to, um, 
they shut down and the original owners um, took it back over and and the hobby I guess the hobby part of the toy shop where they sell all the model kits and paints and um, all the other good goodies yeah it's they've really cut down on what they're getting so I've actually had to source another toy world because um, actually yeah it's the prices in toy worlds are really really good um, so I actually found there's a, there's a business card up here so where they are um, and I'm going to say it anyway because later on the, when this is up on YouTube um, I do know that a couple of my subscribers are Australian or feel in Australia not too many though but for you guys who are in Australia and you are in the Queen, southeast Queensland region um, if you are close to Nambour, I uh, met Dwayne Amos, who works in the hobby, um, in the hobby center, part of Toy World, and he sells stuff there that you would get in a, a really good hobby shop. I mean, for Toy World, he sells all clads. He sells uh, Mr. Hobby Buffables. He sells, oh, jeez, he's Casting resin sets, resin kits. Um, he sells a lot of good stuff, and he's got some really good kits there. I mean, he's got men kits there for, for Christ's sake in Toy World. And that that's just that's pretty good. Um, the other Toy World that I was going to in my hometown here, they had. Um, I also he sells to me Tamiya paints, um, Tamiya extra thin. Um, they they just sells a lot. Of, a lot, of, a lot of good stuff, and, and geez, that's that saves me an hour's trip. Um, that would be from Nambour to Brisbane. Um, our uh, on a good run, it'd be about an hour to the north side of Brisbane. So there's two hours travel that I don't have to do when I go to a hobby shop. Um, also, I was talking to a guy the other day. I know if he was a concrete. So I drive concrete trucks for a living. If you guys are wondering, I was talking to a concrete the other day, and he was from the Pomona Koran region, which is south of where I live. And there is a a model train store, which it's it's weird because it's it's not open every day. It hasn't got your your normal opening hours. So like it's not open you know, nine to five or eight to five a day. Like some days you drive past it. And the plate, the doors are shut. Some days you drive past it, and the the, the roller door to the front of the shop's open. But I did find out because um, I don't have really have a chance to park there because it's got a really small car park. Um, it's like be it a country town, Korean, you, you're not going to have a massive car park. It's basically on the corner of the street, and there's probably enough parking bays, maybe three or four vehicles. Um, I mean, it's, it's not a big uh, hot train shop either. It's probably the size of uh, maybe from looking on the outside, probably like the size of maybe a three to four carport garage. It's only a very little business and, and, I've got, and like I said before, I've never had a chance to go in there because I'm always in the truck and yeah, I can't just pull up the truck in front of his store because yeah, there's just nowhere to park and, and he's parked right or oh, his, his shop is situated across from a major railroad crossing. So yeah, it's it's either that or I park two, three hundred meters up the road and walk down and then try to have a quick walk and jump back in the truck yeah, and I just don't have time for that. So um, I'm gonna have to ring the place and and I probably will do. I'll bring my video. And I might ask if I can bring my video camera in there too, because it's good just to see. I've never actually been in a model railroad store. Um, I know Hobby Rama has a hobby, a railroad section, but just to see what he's got, because um, I wouldn't mind trying to drum up more business for him, because it, there aren't many hobby stores around my area. Um, so I mean, I can drum up, drum up business and advertise for him on my YouTube channel, and just to get it out there. Hopefully, he's going to become more busy. His demand for products is going to grow, and 
I can start going there. But that's only um, Koran's only about half well, from here and half now to town. And then Koran's probably like another twenty minutes, so forty minutes from here to the the, the hobby store. If I can pick up paints, paints is what I'm normally after most of the time, especially new colours. And I couldn't even tell you what range he has. Um, so until I find out, that's what I'll let you know. Right, so that's done. Uh, so A B E F. Just do on grab if I'm going to find out what colour this is. Um, so just bear with me for a minute, guys. I'm just going to spin around. I'm going to Google this colour and see what it is. Um, Oh, yeah, it's just testing this database. Uh, Testings. What a master color chart. Here we go. And what color is it? Is 1709. Wow. Mm. Yeah. There isn't much the colours here. So by paint green code. Mm. Type acrylic. Acrylic will do. Not a nice thing. Okay, red on ten. So, ah, oh, geez, what color is that? That's smaller. That close. And what it's showing me on the monitor, it's it's like a flesh tone almost. So. Uh, Orange oak is a bit dark, so it's going to be it's between the sand, orange ochre, and a My face, my um, ten years in here. Ah. No. Sweat flesh. I might have told you that. So, red oak tan is somewhere between a cream and an orange ochre. Okra. Okra. So I use that. It's not really flat sand, is it? Oh. So what I'm going to do is yeah, I can try and zoom in, but you're not going to see much. So. Yeah, it's still fairly blurry, so I'm sure I just have to highlight it. 
which actually worked out quite well. So that's pretty much going to be impossible for you to see because at the moment I'm looking at my monitor in front of me and that dark yellow and this red aim tan they look like the exact same car but um, all I'm doing is I'm just highlighting around the edge because I did use the flat dark earth from Italeri to base coat the I guess the the tan buckle the, the the buckle for the, the seat belt but I'm using the orange ochre because it is slightly lighter lighter color it's always already quite thin I can just highlight the edge quite easily so that's done um. and I do apologize if you are watching this on YouTube um, I do have it on the background but I can't If you do comment, I've got the volume turned down as well, so a fair bit. So I don't know if anyone comments or anything like that. So I do apologise in that sense. Seats are done. For the, I hope so. Cause I'm, I hate painting seats. <laughs> they suck. Be. The heck. The one little quick bit to paint, and then we're done with the seats for now of highlighting. Because I really hate highlighting. I hate seats. So I'm going to gloss black. Um, what have we got up here? Let's be able to track this out. I'm going to paint everywhere. So, I'm going to give this a quick shake, make sure the cap's on it. Because all I'm going to do now, before I put this down, is I don't want to highlight just yet because all these colours on here are still drying all. Yeah, I'll come up. I want to make them dry before it will dry properly before I start dry brushing. So I've got the two little caps here on, on the seat here. They've got to be matte black. I'm we'll probably test to make it out. And pretty blurry. But I'm going to do my very best to try and show you. So just here and then on the other side and also the same on the other seat. So there's just four little parts of the paint with black. Um, I'm just gonna quickly scroll down um, just to make sure there's no one's commented or I'm not missing anything. So I've just got a bit of life colour, um, black here. Now what I'm going to do, I'm just going to grab a bit out of the cat. The dog that I'm masking tape there. I've got a palette over there, paint palette, so I just really, I'm not, um, I haven't got a lot of painting to do. It's not like I'm painting a miniature and I need like, you know, 50 colours to paint a guy. I'm just painting the seats and I only need a few colours, which is why I'm just using the masking tape there. And then when you are finished, you basically just peel it off your bench and just throw it in the bin and you're done. Um, so what I'm doing... Yeah, I do apologise guys if this is quite boring. Um, I'm not a fan. I love airbrushing. Um, hand painting. 
I mean, just the style of the builds to me is it's fairly boring. I love detail work, watch weathering. Um, like it's not until we start getting the fuselage, getting it put together, and primed, and then start actually laying down the paint. No, that's when I started having fun. Uh, I think who was it? I might have been talking to Sebastian Dutch Modeling uh, a few months ago now. It's been a while since I've actually been on a, uh, a hangout. You know where everyone's been there. I sort of kind of been doing them. Which is convenient in my time. So it's all late in the afternoon, night time now for me. Um, it's just, yeah, it's just really hard for me to get up at half past four in the morning, especially when you have a big weekend, big week at work. So, but I was talking to Sam, and I'm pretty sure he said he he enjoys building more, um, which is, yeah, which is fair enough. Me personally. I hate building, which is why I picked up the Tets Tetra. I got excited about it, um, just because how quick the parts stick together. And anyway, I'm just gonna check the message with this hand. Let's see. Yeah, I think, uh, who was it? Yeah, I do. I think, watching Phil Flory's videos as well. He's more of a painter. He hates building. Um, yeah, so everyone's different. Yeah, like it's, I don't know. It's sort of about actually building the kit. Which is annoying because if you don't put it together right, it doesn't fit. Um, especially if you're using you know, the cement hardens and it just becomes a real pain in the ass. You think you're trying to fix the problem, but when painting, you make a mistake. You just paint over it, done deal. So, yeah. And saying that, Really looking forward to Fado Itch. Got a few kits there with the PE parts in there. Um, never in my life have I built a kit uh, and have to put Fado Itch on it. Got all the tools, um, which is probably why you haven't seen a video of me or a Fado Itch video on my channel because. Um, I suck at photo itch because I've never done it. And so maybe one day, when I'm 47 million years old, I'll probably do a photo itch video, but I've got a long way to go. So it's pretty much done. Seats. So what's left to do here? Okay. That's the instruction sheet here. So if I plop it down on the table. And also, yeah, I forgot I had a coffee. It's probably gone cold. Mm -hmm. Cold coffee. Um, so you look at the instructions here. Don't expect you to be able to see it properly. Just prop them up a bit. Um, that's just a seat construction there. And all the little black dots, you probably can't read out the letters because it's that blurry because I sure as hell can't read it on my monitor in front of me. But all the black dots there are a, um, typical Italian instructions are letters, and they're all actually color call out there. Um, so just got all the the two control the console panels. There's the tub for the for the actual cockpit itself. So if you look at that little part here, 
So what thirteen A there, there you go. I sort of hold it still. You get a rough idea on um, construction of the cockpit and how far we are up. So basically that's the tub. That's your seats that we're working on. And on this 30 centimeter timber ruler that I bought from you, they see it cost me 70 cents. Um, just lay a bit of uh, masking tape on there, stick all your parts on, and spray it on. Now, this is an old trick that I, I picked up when I started painting Warhammer miniatures years ago, and I still use it today. Um, it's pretty handy. They all call it the old painting stick, but it's an extra set of hands, that's what I call it. But um, yeah, so we'll pull these off. We don't need these anymore. And if I'm going to stick something else on there, I'm going to put some fresh tape on there. So just rip everything off that we don't need. So what we've got here is. Now I have no idea what this is. Have a quick look in here. I don't know. Okay. Yeah, so there's really not much to do, eh? So double check. I'll just go play. So I'm not even sure if so there are no decals, decals for the instrument panel. And I may or may not have use of reference material, so I'm going to go through this very quickly. Um, nope. Uh, so I think I've got um, a few books up there. Uh, Facebook shut up. Okay. I'm gonna try one of my newer books. I've got two here. I can go through. I do have another one, but it's called um, what's it called? America's Top Guns, I think. But you don't want to make it yet. I think it's all American book as well. So. Well, I'm going to have it in here or I'm not. I'm going to try it. Sort it out for you. 120. Yeah, Tornado. And that's it. We've got one German aircraft there. My cockpit details spilling. That sucks. Oh, can't oh, get in there. Oh. I don't think I'd have any other books. Unless I'll Google it. Yeah, this has been absolutely pain in the ass to do. You know. The details. Look at that picture there. Mm. So that's where's the big thing? Mm. Oh, instructions, instructions. Seven, seven. If I've left one behind, I will be really pissed. Mm. 
Nope. One, so the four, two seats, and something else. Office there it is. So that's the front one. Um, how do I do that? I'm going to try and cheat, maybe. Gray. Go gray wash here. Um, I'm going to try something new, which I've never done before. And most of you guys know I wing half, I wing it. So if you don't, yeah, I guess that's Australian slang in it. Um, I. I'm always experimenting, um, see how it goes. Yeah, and I guess you've got to do that too. If you don't experiment, you're not going to know if it works. If it fails, and then you just paint it again. So, what we're going to do is we're going to get this um, life colored black back out again. That's the red pea brush. I don't know if that. Um, I'm just going to get a fairly smallish brush. I'm just going to wet it. I'm just going to brush paint the rest of this console. Because what I'm going to do is I'm going to paint it black. And it was, well, I should have used interior black. I thought it would have done grey. But that doesn't matter. Because you know, you're not really going to seal this inside the cockpit. Well, you are, but. Uh, the details going to be that sort of minute, you're not really going to notice it, or the colour change anyway. So, I'm, just, I'm not redoing the um, entire console, like in and out. I'm just touching up where you know, some of the paint's rubbed off, or just hasn't been yeah, painted properly. So you can see here all the raised surfaces here where the paint's rubbed off. Now what I'm going to do is, um, because the center is all black, and you see some of the, oh, some of the controls here are, um, oh, I can't see it, only oh, strike yeah, because what they say on the instructions and what they say or what they show you on a real life image is completely different. So yeah, it's actually quite annoying. You don't know which one to believe. Because it they yeah, because the the colours for the, the German aircraft that they're coming off here could be off the actual real German aircraft. And I don't think this is the German aircraft that they're showing you maybe. I think it's the British one inside. But I couldn't imagine the colours being too different. So Uh, paint this bit. So what I'm going to do, yeah. Sorry, guys, getting sidetracked again. What I'm going to do, if you see the picture here, we can't see it, obviously. Sorry, but all the front of the panels are. It's a light grey. So can you see that? It's, it's like a light grey. And then, oh, it's still enough. And then the actual instructions are saying paint it flat interior grey, which is. Yeah, a really dark grey, almost black. So I'm gonna I'm just gonna thin this paint out a little bit. I'm just dab a bit of water. And I'm just gonna go over the paint again, just thin it out just that ever so slightly so it sits more in the recesses than it does on the top. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go back with and I bought a heap of these as well. Got a heap of cigarette filters which I use for model. Um like painting the kits and builds and stuff. You know, as you know, uh, if you are a smoker or you were a smoker, you know what cigarette filters look like, and you know that the, on the 
the flat edge on each end, yeah, it's actually pretty stiff. So if you just whack a um, toothpick in there or cocktail stick or whatever you want with a sh uh, fine or a sharp point, uh, you can even use an old airbrush needle. That works as well. And stick stick it in the end there, and you actually use it like a little a uh, little paintbrush, but you use it in a stabbing motion, just using the flat. Now, if this was a cigarette filter magnified, a big that's that's, that's a cylindrical shape of a cigarette filter. You basically stick your cocktail stick, whatever, in the end of it, so it's like acts as a handle. You can use a flat edge here. Um, look at that. Let's drop the paintbrush and get paint everywhere. Cool. Now, um, yeah, so using the flat edge of this um, cigarette filter, you can get all the corners. So if this was a uh, like a kit magnified, so if that's the corner, if I get the angles right, okay, so you've got to look at that. And that's the corner of you know, a tank, or the corner of this, or even look at the the surfaces here on the panels. So we'll really use that as a flat surface. And there's all the imagine all these little recesses and you know little holes and things inside the flat surface. If you use a cigarette filter, and I get hold it so you can see what I'm talking about. Okay, see the flat surface, and all you're doing. As long as you, as long as you're not too rough with the cigarette before you, and you start like fraying it all up, and just be gentle with it. Take your time, and just lightly dab, dab the surface with it, and even the corners you can like just dab. Okay, this is what I'm talking about because it's hard and flat. Um, come on, be good, be good, be good, be good, be good. And see, so you're just hitting the corners. And as you're dabbing along, you either press hard to get a fair bit of paint on. You use a dry brush effect, or you just gently touch it. You can just get the corners, um, and that's what I'm going to do here. So I'm just going to try and leave all the recesses black, but then I'm going to try to remember what color I used um, to paint that. Now I've actually forgotten what color I used, so it's going to be fun trying to find the bottle again. I believe it was a life color, or it may have even been a Vallejo color. But that's what I'm going to do. So I'm going to dab on there. And then um, any other details, we'll probably just have to pick out with a um, with a fine brush. So that's what we're going to do. Right, a ten forty. Yeah. Let's get these seeds and put them here for a second. So I drop them and paint them in on that. Oh. So I'll just put that down and then while. while um, we're waiting for that to dry. It's sounding clearly clear, so it shouldn't take that long to dry. I'm just going to go through my paints and try and work out what colour I actually use because it's actually it's more of a grey colour. So the more I'm thinking, I think I use an Italian paint. Um, it could be there. So that one, which is a um, that's the Tallery's. Uh, what paint number is it? Uh, FS36300. Flat paint goes grey. Or it could have been one of the life colour ones. I've started buying life colour paints as well. Um, I have got too many at the moment. I've only got maybe six, maybe eight colours. And the rest are just mediums like a matte clear, matte gloss, semi semi gloss, and I think I've got a thickening agent as well. So if your paint's too thick, you just add a bit of this stuff in there and it thickens it back up again. But you don't need a lot of it because I did you know, put too much on there. Yeah, the paint there you know, just becomes slop. And it's just thick, thick porridge. And I'm pretty sure it was this one. I can't seem to find. Um, I don't think it's a tanning paint. 
Yeah, I'm gonna take my body out of the gray, the gray blue. No, I'm pretty sure it was this. Yeah, because I'm a bit of a tallery pig when it comes to paint. Because I've got so much of it to spray. I actually picked these up for half price at a um, at a toy shop sale, so you got this for about twelve dollars. So that twelve dollars uh that's two dollars a bottle of paint, so that's yeah, bloody dirt cheap. For twenty miles of paint, which is really, really good. So if you do find a sale somewhere and it is half price, um buy it. I highly recommend it. I've had no drives with this paint. It hasn't separated, um, it hasn't peeled, um, and it like it doesn't dry straight away either. Like it's not like the Tamiya paints where you spray it and poof, it's dry. It, it probably takes um, you do get a bit of working time with this um, with the the Atari paints. But if you do find that when you are spraying the models and through your airbrush and you're finding that it's drawing too quick, I mean, it could be air pressure. Um, I, I do get that question asked. A lot of people do ask me that question. The paint's drying on the model. I'm getting that chalkboard effect on my kits when I'm, on my subject when I'm spraying it. What do I do? Um, turn your air pressure down. Um, generally, you know, some people say 10 to 15. Like for the fine detail work, um, standard work, or standard detail. If you're just spraying your kit, it depends. If you're spraying a big model, um, like you're spraying like a big 132 F15 or F14 or some or a ship, um, you know, you could generally I would spray. And some people do say full, like full pressure. I want to say full pressure. I'm talking about 30 psi, um, 25, somewhere between 20 to 25 is fine. I think it's, it's, it's not overkill. You, you're not, um, you know, just assassinating the paint out of the, the, the airbrush. If you know, you still find that it's drying. It, um, if you're living in a hot like you know, a hot climate, especially if here in Australia, like you spray in the middle of the summer, your paint just buff it, just dries midair, and yeah, you just get that real yucky, rough texture on your kit. Um, what I suggest is just add, um, like I know Tamiya, and I've got some myself. Just add some Tamiya uh, acrylic retarder. Um, and I keep repeating myself in most of my videos because you know, because there are guys out there that have did watch the last video. So you just pick up, if you get that way where you live, just a, a paint retarder. I wonder why my camera is all weird. Everything's all stretched out. Um, but yeah, just a paint retarder there. Or if you go to your, if you have an art supply store somewhere that sells good. Um, not good, but just yeah, they sell artist um, work mediums and that for their acrylic paints. Now, don't think, and this is what I used to think a very long time ago artist dolls, or not artist dolls, artist acrylics and model acrylics are completely different paints. They, they are. But they aren't. So when I say they are and they aren't, um, I'm gonna. I'm just sort of blowing on a bit. So I'm trying to give this paint a chance to dry. And, and it's really annoying that my um, my screen is like it really looks fat. Not. I think it's just because my, I'm gonna reset my camera on my webcam. But um, just give me a minute and I'll find it for you. Thanks in the way. Where do go? Oh, there is. Is it? Uh, I'm trying to find this paint, guys. So just bear with me just for a second. Let me see if I can find it for you. Uh, 
Wow, I'm going to do it, so I always... Mm-hmm. So I have to use it a little bit, so it could be anywhere on my shelf. Um, Happy day. Mm-hmm. Nope. Where the heck did you go? So I can just glue some legs and ran off the next door lady. Um, That is insane. This pain has just gone complete walkabout somewhere. Okay. Um, well, I'll keep talking while I'm trying to look for this paint. What I was saying before is acrylic, artist acrylics and hobby acrylics, um, they, they do work. Like you don't think that, you know, you, you can't go to an art shop and buy artist acrylics and paint a model with it. Um, you can and you can't, okay? And just remember I said that you can and you can't. The, the, Atelier or the Talier range. Um, when I find it, like I don't want you to confuse Atelier because it's the way I say Atelier as well, so it's it's going to be a bit of confusion. Atelier is a is an artist um, brand, so like you're going to find these in your art shops and things like that. And obviously, your Atelier is your your hobby, it's your hobby paint, and and I think that it's it's got a close relationship with Vallejo paints. Now, don't quote me on that. Um, so basically, don't say, "Oh, Clem said that it's it's um, Vallejo paint." Um, it smells kind of the same. It the it paints very similar. It it works sort of you know it's like you can use Vallejo products as in their thinners and things like that, and it. Um, it actually works quite well, but there is an art. Okay, well, I can't find. It. I don't know where in the in the life of me what I've done with it. Um, yeah, you, you would. You seriously, you wouldn't think that two bottles of paint um, would be hard to find, but when it doesn't want to be found, it's quite tricky to find. Um, I have well I did have uh, two bottles of paint which is uh, don't tell the city are you idiot that was okay. I was looking somewhere else. Um, this is the Atelier Artist. Um, yeah, it's still a bit, a bit of time to dry this, still a bit of time to talk. Uh, you got the Atelier Artist Acrylics. Now, I'm going to show you real quickly how thin, how thin this stuff is. And I've got a big, whopping, dirty fishing sinker in there. It's probably about. Uh, Probably about the size of a marble, okay, so that's probably about, you know, so big compared to the bottle. See here, that's just really um, shaking up the bottom. And same with that one. But you can actually spray this through an airbrush 
quite nicely. Now, I wouldn't personally do a, a finishing coat on a model with this stuff. Like, what I mean that, like, I wouldn't paint because uh, I have done a test run on a 35 um, scrap model um, German miniature that I've got just as a you know, as a test subject. So when I get new products and stuff, I'll always use him. Or I've got an old crappy tank I use it all. But um, yeah, it's you can spray pre-shading panel lines as long as you prime your kit prior um, and a little bit of thinning out. You've just got to experiment with it. Um, it's already quite a thin paint now. It's it's not as thin as model air. It's somewhere between model air and the layer model color when you first get it out of the um, bottle. So it's actually a really thin paint. It's actually I don't know what I paid for it. Um, I think these are about eight or nine bucks a bottle, but these are sixty mils. Okay, so I, you know, pretty sure I did. I did too. I used this, which is the black. It's called carbon black, and it's. Well, it says it's transparent, so and this one is semi-transparent. I don't know why, but yeah, I haven't actually painted this stuff on paper yet. But I did the the um, pre-shading the SG34 quite easily. It sprayed it up. It didn't rub off. Um, yeah, and yeah, I'm not, and I don't want to waste you know my life color paints or my Vallejo's or whatever because <laughs> for some funny reason, matte black is just one of those colors that everybody buys, and it's Pretty hard to get in most of my hobby shops. You go there and it's just like it's gone. And the next thing you, you've, the next choice is you've got gloss or semi-gloss, which is yeah, which, which I don't want. So the and getting back to the artist stuff. So yeah, it's it's similar to hobby paint, but it's not. It's it hasn't got the resins and all the binding stuff that in the hobby paints, which which gives the paint a harder finish um, than the artist. Acrylics, which is why you know they rub off a lot easier because I've got the you know the, the binding stuff that whatever they put in the hobby paint. But this is where I'm getting to now. The retarders that you can get to mix with these paints to slow them down do work, and they do work very well with the with the the Vallejos, your Italeri paints, your Citadels. Um, your Reaper paints. Uh, what else is there? I just don't forget any. Um, any acrylics that use water to um, thin out. So, like putting this with Tamiya's and uh, your your Mr. Hobby um, colors, it's not going to work because, as you know, that. Um, yeah, I've tried it and it just does not work. There's, there's a test, a little test palette, it just goes all gluggy and for some, it's just the chemicals that um, the Tammy use, even they're thinner, say like you know, X20A is. Um, it says you know, it's, I don't like using X20A to thin out my paints either, like or yeah, the Vallejos and that. I'd rather just use Vallejos or whatever. But yeah, X20A is it's it's kind of a funny thing. So. If you've got anything like even life colors, this stuff will retard life colors. So if you want to slow the uh, the drying time down, um, sorry, if you want to increase the drying time, yeah, just make a bit of retarded it. Now this one here is more for your palette. Um, which one is it? It's more for your brush painting. This one, it's a a thick slow medium. So if you've got um, um, sort of fairly thick paint. You don't want to thin it out too much by adding water. You you can use this stuff. It's it's fairly thick. Like it's it's still running. Like don't get me wrong. You can see it. it's still I swish it around. You can still see that it moves around a bit. But this stuff here, that's a medium. That's an additive. Um, but if I leave them there, I don't know if you can read them. If you want to just oh, quickly just there. Yeah, I'm trying to focus. Come on, man, focus. But you may be able to read that. So if you if you do get a chance to read, just probably just pause it bit by bit and just have a read of it, what it is. 
Um, it just says slows down the drying process when added to artists, acrylics, and mediums. And that's the additive. That's the retarder. It's like water. So it's great for in your airbrush and stuff. Like, and I've had this. You don't need much of this at all. It's only you need maybe one, two drops tops to a full um, paint cup in a hopper. And when I say a full paint cup, I'm talking about one of those small ones. I couldn't even tell what size that is because yeah, it's one of those small ones. So if that's my hand there, okay. And that will get that, that's a a trick that I got myself or got myself out of a lot of trouble, especially in summer. Um, with the retarders, so enough blabbing there. Sorry, guys, just trying to fill in time while I do while this is drying. So now that this is dry, this is where the fun begins. So what you're going to need is uh, you can use anything with a point on it. You can use it just a like your cheap toothpick, so you can get like just a decent cocktail stick, um, like so. And, and these filters, you get them all sorts of widths as well. So if you want a fat one, um, you get the regular ones. If you want thin ones, you get the slim ones. And they do come even thinner than that. So if you've got really small areas that you want to get this filter into, um, you can you can get them actually smaller. So what you want to do is just get the pointy and cocktail stick. And I'm going to... What I'm going to show you, just so you can see. Um, I love throwing my stuff around the table, down. I? Should should do a um outtakes video of all the every time I throw something on a bench. It'll probably be like a 20 minute video. So what you want to do is you, you only want the cocktail stick only so far in there. Like you don't want to go all the way through. Um, you know, so it sticks out the other side. You only want it, you know, halfway, probably just above half. That way, the the um, filter is not going to be you know, um, moving around too much on the cocktail stick. So you can see where the black mark is, the cocktail stick there. So you just push in the middle, and pretty much just stop. And that's that's pretty much a rough guide on how far to stick it in. About halfway. Is, is plenty. So what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to keep shaking this a bit more. Right. So I said it. Very decent shake in it. Now, because I mean, you can actually just pick the paint off the um, bottle if you want. Because you haven't, it's a brand new sterile. Um, that's a big moth. Yeah, because this is a sterile, like, um, what do you call it? An applicator. So it's you know, it's not like it's, a, it's an old paintbrush that you put in water and dipped it out and washed it. and So you shouldn't really have any dramas with... Well, you're not going to cross-contaminate anything, that's what I'm trying to say. So you basically just feed it straight out of the bottle. And it doesn't matter how much you put on there because, you know, obviously the, the cigarette sort is going to soak up most of the paint and run in, so you're not going to get any pooling on top. And all you want to do is you get an old paper towel. It doesn't have to be brand new, it's an old one, because all you do is just scrub the paint out. It's going to be like dry brushing, okay? So do it on your finger. See, I'm, the skin's a prime example, so you, know, you probably need a little bit more paint than that. You don't want it as dry um, as if as you were um, like proper dry brushing. You still want some paint to come off, but you don't want. Um, that little paint on there that you got to scrub to get the paint on the model. You don't want to scrub it, you want to dab. So, so that's pretty much right. Okay, so what I'm just leaving there, it's not going all the way down into the recess of my skin, but it's still leaving a fair bit on top. So, what you want to do now is start off on the edge, 
because this is the bit you're not really going to see. It's going to be like sort of covered by the side, the side panels on the, the fuse line the nose here. So just to do a test, to dab it on there. And doing this way, um, you don't get brush marks. Think of it as you're using a um, or when you paint the house and your or the walls on your house, you use a paintbrush or you use a roller. You're going to get a nicer finish with a roller than you know, with a paintbrush. So it's pretty much the same thing. And there's not many people that I know that actually use this technique. So and I love using this technique. Yeah, just sort of too lazy one day to get my paintbrush out. Um, yeah, just had a heap of these things laying around and thought I'd try this technique out. It's about 10, 15 years ago and I've been yeah, using it ever since. And, yeah, give it a try guys. It's it's actually really, really very quick. It can be messy if you have too much paint on you on the filter, but once you get the hang of it, um, yeah, you can come up with some really nice effects, especially weathering armor. Um, and it makes oh, it's it makes it so quick, like it's to weather it like a tank. But all you're doing is hitting the edges. You're not sitting there for hours, just like you're getting a little brush and just dabbing the corners. Yeah, you can get the chipping effects done and knocked over in a tank quite quickly using this effect or using this technique. So this is definitely the colour you use because as it's drying, it's blending in there, it's disappearing. So um, yeah, this is where you want to be careful. You want you want to dab lightly. One of these days, I'm going to work out how to get um, my or find a program for my camcorder to plug it straight in and record light that way. This is bad. Bad so quality images really start to annoy me, guys. Um, because you guys can't see it. But that sucks. Hey? That's probably the best I can do. Um, unless I we use my JVC to record it, and then that just takes forever. And I don't need really like uploading two hour videos. Just don't get the time to do it. So, yeah, just dabbing. You want. So that's probably at this stage now it's probably like a little bit too much paint. So you want to take off as much as you can without it being dry or nothing on there. Now you might have to dab the same spot carefully maybe three three times, three to four times max. You want to do that instead of just going one big dab on there and then everything just disappears. Um, now this is really hard to see so what I'm going to try and do is um, you'll probably get I'll probably do these videos and this is what I might start doing guys um, I'll do these videos as live builds and I guess in between so like oh, this will be um, part one and then there'll be like part 1.5 which will be um, the update, like it just be a really quick five minute update um, using the JVC cam call. They'll get uploaded, and then the next time I do the next part of the build, it'll be you know, uh, Tornado or Battery Tornado 1 to 48 Part 2. So I guess the point fires in between are going to be like the real clear, but the, the clear versions, uh, HD versions of the, this build. So I'm still trying to sort of work out how I'm going to structure this channel because at the moment it's all over the shop. Um, so I think that's going to work. So if you like the idea of that, just leave a comment in the comments box, like um, on the sidebar up here. And if you think that's a bad idea, just let me know. Um, because I'm trying to just make it as user friendly as I can for the for the viewers. Because there's nothing worse than going to some guy's channel and you know, it's all out of the shop. <clears throat> so yeah, so if you do think that's going to work, just let me know. So just 
a bit more. This we're gonna be doing this for a while. And doing it this way as well, it doesn't take up any space on the hard drive. So we're just gonna go dab, dab it, dab it. Oh, there you go. Just going through my comments, and Stefan Wallen has done again. Yeah, thanks for watching, Stefan. Yeah, I just don't get. If you are watching, mate, I don't. <laughs> I have not had that. Um, haven't had much time lately, even just to join the hangouts that the other boys have. I'm either away from town, or I'm working, or like last night I had. Had some good friends over that I haven't seen in a while, and they come up from the city. Um, they just spent the weekend here, so just a fair bit of drinking. Had a big fire outside last night, so yeah, didn't really get much time to do anything. Slept, had a good sleep in this morning because we're still. We didn't get really drunk last night, it's just good to catch up and have a few drinks with the boys. So, and most of the guys, yeah. No, uh, just just the shit that I told last night was funny. Um, well, I guess it is rated at eighteen plus. So yeah, one of the guys, all he wanted to do was just just for shits and giggles. He thought it'd be funny um, because it was. I do live on acreage. You know, neighbors don't want to hear. Much that comes out of um, this land room, so you could have music absolutely cranking up really loud, and they don't hear it. So one of the boys thought it would be funny to get on a porn site, whack um, two lesbians on, and just turn the volume right up. So while we're outside at the fire, all you could hear was two girls moaning. <laughs> it was hilarious. And we'd come inside, and here he was sitting there just laughing. He was like, good on you. <laughs> so there was definitely no modelling last night. All right, so. And this is going to have to be a couple of attempts at this. I'm going to press a bit harder down on this one. And then what I'm going to do is I'm just going to um, flood it with a black wash. Yeah, so I still want a bit of shadow in there. I'll take this bit off now. I'm going to take this off. So I'll take the blue tack off here. I'm just gonna lock it straight down there and I'll like really press down hard. So it doesn't really seem to be hurting it. Because um, I think the um, the Florida models black wash or the black clay based wash, if there's anything like the UMP stuff, it's gonna sit in there really nice. So yeah, I'm not really too worried now about Because I don't, I'm not going to brush paint it on there because I don't want the, um, I don't want the thick paint in there. I just want to slowly put the paint in there. Because every time you press down and you lift it back up again, you're still sucking the paint up. So you're not, not like a brush where you, you leave the paint on the surface. And you're not getting any brush marks either, so it's not really. Too worried about the neatness here at this stage because um, the wash is going to get it just kind of tidy it all up, and then we have to dry brush again. 
I will actually use a dry brush to get all the edges later. So there's going to be a few steps to do to this. So you see that the black slowly disappearing. And you see that oh, and in the middle there's still black, but it's more brown on the outside. So you're just going to. Yeah, what I'll do just quickly show you if you only want to do the buttons, I could all you need to do is just lightly press, just like very lightly press on there. And you can just see those four buttons up the top there. They're done. You know, you don't get any paint on there or so yeah, seriously guys, try this technique out. If you just want to get the raised surfaces, corners and things like that, just it takes a bit of practice to get to get used to how much paint you need on the filter. Um, yeah, but it's like anything, you practice, practice a few goes and get it, especially just practice on a, a cruddy old part that you've got in your bits box. Um, I wouldn't do it on a, a kit that you that you nearly finished and next minute you just trash it. You know, just practice on, you know, even practice on your skin, you know, like you know, sort of that's always a good way to know how much paint on you do on your skin. If paint starts going in the cracks of your skin or um, you know, you've got too much on there. So I can't work out. So I'm getting comments popping up in the middle as well. So this is why, if you do ask me a question, I don't get to them. I'm gonna scroll up and down and go through. It. That's why I didn't even notice the farm was there watching. So I do apologise. Sorry, mate. <laughs> Go around the joystick as well. And then you can really press down. I mean, you can see how hard I'm pressing. I'm actually pressing really, really hard, literally to the point where the filter is bending, and I'm still not getting paint in here. Okay. And there's still paint on this thing, it's not like it's, it's dry, but there's still paint on the pad and filter. And what I'm going to do now is um, there's a ton of recess work on here and a lot of services. And there's, I don't think, I'm going to get a filter in there. Always, I will. So, that one's all flogged out, as you can see. And if you can see that, all the ends are all trashed on there. So just chuck it in the bin. Get another one. Yeah, so you've always got plenty of these. You pay like only a couple of dollars for them. From most, I don't know where, what part of the world you're watching from, or where you can buy, you know, smoking products. Generally, over here, it's generally you know shopping centres, supermarkets, news agencies, corner shops, um, and obviously tobacco stores. They generally sell them. Um, now, being um, I know a lot of countries will be over a certain age to smoke, so if you are underage, um, yeah, just get an older person to um, buy them for you. No, I'm not saying you know, go and get them to buy you a pack of cigarettes by any means. I'm not saying that at all. I'm just saying, yeah, if sometimes they may not, because you're underage, um, they may not sell them to you, so.
So this is probably end up brush um, dry brush not dry brush, you can get a paint brush on in here as well. Yep, I think it's gonna be a paint brush too. So paint there and drop. Um, we'll do some paint brush. Yep, so Still, I'm not flooding, even with the paintbrush, I'm not flooding it in there. I'm still taking a fair bit of the paint off. So I don't want to lose the recess. As soon as you start putting heat packed in the paint in there, and it start building up, building up, building up. By the time you put your wash in there, it loses all the effect. Like it's, yeah, all your cracks start filling up the paint. And get you got get your um, mind out of the gutter, guys. <laughs> I'm not talking about that crack, I'm talking about the recesses. Uh, it's so just put it in there. And you might think it's looking quite messy now. Don't want this to be patchy. Like it's had um what do you call it? Um, Appreciate. So just making sure around the joystick, I'm going to leave a fair bit of black to start to shadow in there. And it's kind of dry brushing now, just sort of toning down the black or well, lighting up the black a bit more. Okay, you can see the black's still there. Just because the, the camera's got such a bad, you know, it's, it's a pretty shitty camera, guys. So, try not to draw the bristles along the recess if you can sort of help it. Either go on an angle, like, so obviously the recess lines go either north or south or east or west, if you hold it this way. So, if you just drag it on an angle, more than likely the, the bristles aren't going to go dragging through the recesses and, and all the recess lines disappear because that's what I don't want. Okay, so just quickly doing this one. Oh, it's not a yawn too. Oh, we're going to get a bit soon. Filter thing again. Let me wash this brush in there. So, just going back to cigarette filter thing. Way too much paint, but it doesn't matter. Remember, I want all this patchy anyway. And all I'm doing now is just going back over it. This where there was a couple of areas where the paint went a bit thick. Now, as the acrylic starts drying on the filter and starts getting sucked up through the filter, it's also taking off any excess paint that's on this. And, um, this is pretty 
much fit. And I think I'm really using um, some clear part cement just in here to replicate some of the glass, glass work. Now, Down the bottom, up the top. Okay, so it's time is now half past two. Just a little bit before half past eleven. So um, I'm going to end this video pretty, pretty soon, I think. Um, so I'm just yeah, going to rip this. Let's get ripped off. And you've still got a clean cocktail stick. And that's that's the beauty of this um, technique. Give it a try, guys. Um, as always, what whatever you see on my channels, um, even if you go to um, Outback Mini Models on Facebook, um, if, and if there are techniques that you have picked up from this channel, um, feel free to post photos on Outback Mini, Outback Mini Models on Facebook. And um, yeah, I'd really love to see what you guys are doing with those techniques. Um, let me know if it's a, if it's a, if it's a um, success or a fail. Um, you like the technique, you don't like the technique. If there's something else that you do that's similar, um, yeah. Let us know, like it's, yeah, and if, it's, and, if it's, and if you do end up sharing, sharing on um, Facebook, um, maybe also mention me eh, if it's if you want me to share it on the page on the channel, share it with tips, you know, and I can obviously then give you credit for um, sharing with everybody. Uh, hang on a second, I'm just trying to find something. Um, yeah, so there's really not much more I can do because my eyes are starting, you know, starting to get heavy now. So I think um, I'm to think before I go if there's anything else I can mention. Um, Well, what we can expect on the next build, on the next part of the video, I guess, um, it's... Yeah, I'm just rolling smoke here, guys, too. You have smoke if I go to bed as well, so... Um, and, um, which is why I make these, also I make these videos 80 plus most of the time. It's, what do I say? Yeah, so next part of the build, it's... I guess it's going to be more de detailing up the um, instrument panels because yeah, we can't really do much until I get all that done, and then we can start putting the um, cocktail, the cocktail, the cockpit together. So I start growing these two halves together. If I can find the other one. So once all this starts going together. It's going like that. The um, seats will start going in. So if I just sort of carefully lay out, or roughly lay out, mock up what it's going to look like. Oops, D. Camera won't be so wonky either. See, this looks fat. I'm just going to reboot the system. It's been on all day, so. I plugged the camera in halfway, didn't actually reboot the computer with, with the camera plugged in, so that's probably why it's all wonky and stuff. Um, yeah, so all these, so 
all the panel work's going to get cleaned up. All this is going to get highlighted. I'll move some shots so you can see it. So you're not guessing what I'm talking about. Um, okay, so the nose will start going together. But I think the instrument panels alone is that's going to take a while to do. So that's not going to be a quick you know, five minute thing. Here you go, it's all done. It's probably going to be uh, mm, wash, gloss coat, or gloss coat, wash, paint. We should be trying to paint that somehow too, I would say. Yeah, and my room is quickly go over it um, with a lighter colour. I don't know yet. Um, I'm actually going to bring this magazine with me to work tomorrow. So if I do get a chance, yeah, on a, on a meal break or something, I'm going to so it takes some notes and work out what I'm going to do. Um, so, yeah, that's pretty much the plan for the next video, the next part of the build. Um, when I do get them, this is what you can expect coming up as well. Um, the, this Atelier paint that I was talking about earlier on about pre-shading, I will be using that again for pre-shading this plane. Um, also, I'm going to have to add some weights in the nose here, um, in the nose, where is it? Probably in the box, yes. So it's asking me to add 30 grams of weight in the nose here, but I've got a ton of old fishing sinkers outside, so I'll probably set up hacking one out, or you know, smashing, smashing it out with a hammer or something, flatten it out and sort of glue it in there. Uh, was luckily the SU-34, it said to put, well, I don't know, no, 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 yeah, it did say to put weight in there, but I forgot to put weight in there, but luckily it sits, like, flat, so, that's pretty much it, guys, I'm not going to bore you by rambling on, so, yeah, thanks for joining us this evening, we'll probably see you tomorrow, or maybe the next day, depends on how much time I get. Um, so pretty much this is a new series of videos of builds that I'll be doing live. Um, so yeah, if you are watching this later back on YouTube, yeah, comment down below if you do like these series of videos. If you want to see more of them, um, the only downside is it's not in HD, which is why there's no intro. Um, to these because in the intro you know, it says all my builds, all the tutorials and reviews are in um, 1080 HD and this is this is not so um, yeah but yeah, just, just comment let me know if you think it's, it's a, this is a waste of time um, and you don't see anything, you don't learn anything from it just comment, yeah, be nice to me though, don't, yeah, don't be an arse and just yeah, make a comment just with pure fun of it. Um, do one serious comment, so yeah, let me know what you think. Okay, guys, uh, so I'm off to bed, um, and thanks for watching, and um, most of all, thanks for, thanks for all the new subscribers out there. I'm nearly up to 100, I think it's just on 120 now, so uh, keep up the good work, fellas, and um, yeah, next time you see these things, if you do get the um, if you do get all your cameras in that working, yeah, feel free to join. Just click on the link um, and just join and be more than happy to have a chat with you and build chat at the same time. So good night, guys, wherever you are around the world, and um, I'll see you next time. Bye.